making sure that it's close to second. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, this is 3 30. I'd like to call the Ways and Means meeting of June 7th, 2012. To order, please. Got a roll call. Commissioner Cross? Here. Commissioner Derezinski? Excused. Commissioner Engel? Here. Commissioner Jagger? Here. Commissioner Longmire? Present. Commissioner Mahoney? Here. Commissioner Plummer? Here. Commissioner Stolman? Here. Commissioner Snyder? Here. Commissioner Wilkins? Here. Commissioner Collins? Here. Ten present, thank you. Approval of the minutes for the meeting on May 15th. Both minutes. So move for both sets of Second. Move and seconded for approval of both minutes, sessions. Any questions or corrections? All in favor say yes. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. Public comment on an agenda item. Anybody in the audience like to address the board? Please come to the podium and identify yourself, please. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Velasco, Velasco Electric. I understand that uh, on your agenda today, actually I find it to be the last one, you'll be discussing a recommendation for award for, as I call it, RFP 12167. It's the emergency generator uh, for the Central Services Building, the prevailing wage project, and I was not the low bidder on that job, so I'd just like to say a few things if I may. There were three bids turned in, uh, Diversified Electric, Airport Electric LLC, and Alaska Electric, of course, locally. I've not seen the post bid information uh, posted to the Mitten website yet, so I'm actually going by my conversational knowledge of the of this bid results of this project. I understand Diversified Electric was the apparent low bidder on this project, but we're not given recommendation for award due to a dramatic price uh, difference in price. Airport Lighting LLC was second at 154,000, and would be given the recommendation. Alaska Electric was third or last at 157,481, 2.2% difference. I also understand Airport Lighting is a newly formed company as of December 13, 2011. As I understand, they're an offshoot from Airport, um, excuse me, Airport uh, Lighting, a new company because Airport Lighting has been cited for numerous uh, prevailing wage violations and abuses. The parent company, um, John R. Hull, was the owner. I have first-hand experience with Mr. Hull's first company, named John R. Hull, was an MDOT contractor with Local 275. I was at the time and still am chairman of a Local 275's apprenticeship training committee. We had to sue his company for non-payment and subsequently closed his doors and started Airport Lighting. Airport Lighting LLC was created by the employees of Airport Lighting. I asked myself, why did the offshoot company keep the same name? The new owners were employed by Airport Lighting. Were they part of or have knowledge of the prevailing wage abuses that went on there? The bid general specifications, page 16 of the bid documents, particularly item number six, require that the contracting company have a minimum of five years experience doing this type of work, which Airport Lighting has been in existence for only five months. On June 30th, Alaska Electric will have been contracting in the Stephen County for 62 years and is presently registered with the county's EEO as a DBE. All of my subcontractors on this project are Muskegon County businesses. Muskegon Quality Builders for the general trades and flat work construction, Alaska Plumbing and Mechanical for all the mechanical and gas connections, East Muskegon Roofing, also a certified WBE for all the roofing repairs required on this project, <coughs> and Erickson Truck and Crane Service for all of the erection and, and rating. All their employees are Muskegon County residents. Alaska Electric have been working for Muskegon County for over 25 years and played a key role with the design of this project so we work with Hooker D. John engineers as advisors. This particular project also requires a two-year warranty. You know my company. We will be there tomorrow and respond promptly when called upon. I'm not here to request that the county pay a premium for a local or a minority contractor, but for discussion 
you know what kind of product you're getting with Belasco Electric versus Airport Lighting LLC? That's all I have to say. If you have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Belasco. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Lupe Alviar, 2065 Regal Road. Um, I'm here to speak in support of uh, John and what he said about this uh, particular contract. Number one, I have no financial interest in this. What I do know is the stuff that John has done for us. The citizens of the county came to John and asked him to donate his time and donate his effort so that we could get started on putting lights out at the uh, Veterans Park in the causeway for the first time in 80 years. He drew up this extensive plan right down to the last screw and bolt. That's a lot of time, that's a lot of effort, that he charged nobody. For all of us who saw the lights on the south end of the park last Christmas, that was thanks to John and his supervision of the IBEW workers who donated. So I'm, I'm what I want to ask, and I know you all have a tough decision because these decisions, I've seen you with these decisions for a long time. Uh, all I ask is that you take a second look at this and maybe query John more about this other contract. If this is less than 1%, I mean, I don't think we're looking for the lowest bidder. I think we're actually looking for the best value. And he's already returned that amount of money difference and just donations to the county for the county. So I speak in support and I appreciate your effort. I speak in support of what John said. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Alvar. Moving on for items for consideration. So WM 12-06-78 for administration approve the accounts fail. Second. Moved and seconded. Questions? All in favor of the motion say yes. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. WM 12-06-79 authorizes staff to apply for funding from the Michigan State Police to enhance the GIS system. Second. Accept the grant of awarded. Second. That's what moved and seconded. Questions? See none. All in favor say yes. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. WM 12 slash 06 dash 80 from administration. Authorize the staff to apply for funding from the Michigan Department of Treasury. Continue to host a service for other municipalities. So moved. I have to move and second it. Mr. Jagger. Uh, could, could this possibly be costing the, these local municipalities any money? Judy Kell, grant coordinator, and Heath is going to join me on this. Um, um, it's my understanding that part of the reason that we're doing this is to improve the efficiency of the municipalities on, on our expanded <coughs> system so that we're all um, being more efficient. Um, for the citizens of not only the county, but for the municipalities involved. We started doing this for the cities of Muskegon Heights and Roosevelt Park, and we wish to expand this to other municipalities and so. Heath Kaplan, Finance and Management Services Director, actually did a contrary. Uh, this would actually save the taxpayers significant funding um, is what is being proposed here is, for example, um, Muskegon Heights. Instead of them having to spend uh, Muskegon Heights taxpayer dollars to hire an outside contractor, what they currently do, to manage a, a server network, uh, they are, uh, we're gonna host their site here with county taxpayer dollars, uh, which of course sometimes is synonymous with Muskegon Heights taxpayers as well. But instead of double dipping that effort, um, obviously we're gonna do it at just our cost, uh, with, instead of them having to go outside um, into the private sector to get that, that same service. Same with Roseville Park. 
these are the efforts that which the governor, uh, Governor Schneider, is incentivizing each of our municipalities, including counties now, coming up this, next, this fiscal year for consolidation and, and, and cooperation efforts. Um, and so the way we are doing this, um, in some respects, is uh, we're negotiating a, a cooperative agreement with Central Dispatch to piggyback on their fiber line for us to be able to help these municipalities. Again, we're getting two, in my opinion, two bangs for the buck. Uh, one, we're getting a cooperation effort with Central Dispatch, and other, we're, we're, we're working with a, uh, a consolidation effort with the municipality to uh, consolidate down IT <coughs> services. Now, is it taking money away from the private sector? Absolutely it is. Um, but however, it is saving taxpayers money by doing it. Um, my goal, and what is going to be in my part of the EVIP, as they call it, the Academic Vitality Incentive Program, um, or EVAP, as they like to call it, on the revenue side, um, is um, yeah. I would like to, um, this is the this is the model in which I would like to promote um, new doing business uh, in the public sector. I, I guess why I ask this is because Fulton doesn't have the money to bring the fiber from the bone or from the fire department to their township hall. So they vote to turn all this down because of lack of money, right? So if we, if this in any way forces them to hook to this line when they can't afford to hook to this line, this isn't gaining them any well, No, this I, is only applying for efforts that we currently uh, are undertaking. So this is for the Skegan Heights and with Roosevelt Park. And as we continue, with other uh, municipalities that may be interested. You know, Holton doesn't have that ability, that's fine. We're not going to force a connection. We're just wanting to offer this to wherever we do have fiber in the area, which is so, what so is about 63% roughly of all municipalities in the county. Well, since they only have to go a quarter of a mile, then this would be feasible. They could apply for some of this to do it if they want. Absolutely. The same, the same money that's available, I think it's about a million dollars, Judy, is that something right? I think it's a million dollars that's available to all municipalities. And so I would encourage them to apply. And if they need any assistance, of course, we're happy to, to assist them. And Judy, yeah, I guess that would be. And it's due Friday. <laughs> that would be, uh, be a day. Okay. So they need to. But get this is an easy quick. application to get, to get going, too. So if they need help, let us know. ASAP. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? All in favor of the motion, say yes. Yes. All opposed, say no. Carries. WM 12 slash 6 dash 81 approve the contractors in a multiple vendor list for emergency repairs and rehabilitation. Second. second. Move and second. Comments? All in favor say yes. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. WM 12 slash 6 dash 82 adopt the license agreement with Baskin Enterprises LCC for use of Heritage Landing. I'll raise the chair to sign the agreement. Second. Moved and seconded. Comments? Mr. Snyder? I would simply want to make a disclaimer. Uh, Brandon Baskin is my grandson. Uh, and he is the one who is going to be uh, promoting, and he is promoting, uh, Rockstock as a substitute for uh, the failed summer celebration contract. Uh, so I will not be voting on this. I have however, had the opportunity to talk to Brandon about this, uh, I'd rather listen to him actually, <laughs> about this, he, this is not his first effort. Um, so if anyone has any questions, I will attempt to answer them. I, was, I, I think everybody anticipated that Mr. Lukens was going to be here today. Any questions? Uh, well, Mr. I'm, I'm sure that all the permits and Police or anything else that I had, he's going to take care of. Oh, yes. He's got all that under control. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> he will be, he'll be the one who will be financially responsible for it. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> is he giving us tickets? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Volunteering. Yeah. 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 Right. That's right. I'll see that you get one or two. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I do have some uh, information on this if, you, if you'd like sure. to share with the group. Um, again, Bonnie, uh, sends her apologies for not being able to make today's meeting, but I do have some knowledge on this matter. Uh, Bob Lukens did work with myself and Bonnie in regards to the issue. Um, everything, again, is per our policies. 
Um, we uh, followed everything to the, the, to the nth degree to make sure, again, it's a fair, equitable process for everyone. Um, and this is the individual that has approached us is willing to do it. Uh, and so, again, um, um, I'd be honest with you, I didn't even know the relation to uh, Mr. Snyder until this very moment. So, um, I guess, but, but to answer your question, yes, we are following per protocol and policy on this. Mr. Wilkins? Yes, my only concern with was the name, just the festival. Usually there's a name that pre precedes a given festival. Was there any reason for that? It's just... In, in that I cannot answer, I don't know. I don't know, I apologize, but I can get back to you with an answer for that. Mr. Cross? Nothing more than telling thank you for stepping up to the plate to have something for the residents of the county to come down and enjoy the summer. That was, I'm echoing exactly what Mr. Cross said. Yeah, I think a lot of what I remember was uh, Bob Lucas as they were scrambling to try to find a void for the summer celebration. And so I think this is part of filling that void. Um, Mr. Engel, any details yet? On summer celebration and filling the void or the all, all, well, all of the all all above? The above. Um, again, I'd have to defer that to Mr. Lukens. I know they're working quite diligently to try to do what they can. Okay. Anyone else? I have to say that this is, it will be a two-day event uh, on a weekend, uh, Friday and Saturday, and uh, it's in conjunction with the uh, art street that uh, art, 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 art. Uh, it's not his first effort. He has uh, done this three times before, and he's done it under the symbol of rock stock, the ski team. Okay, let's go. All in favor of the motion, say yes. 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 No, no, say no. No. I am sorry. <laughs> 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 that motion carries. Please note my abstention. Abstention. <laughs> Okay, WM 12 slash 6 dash 83. So moved. Has been moved and seconded. Questions? All in favor of the motion say yes. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. WM 12 slash 6 dash 84. Approve the operating levies and authorize the scheme funding equipment for the solve Second. Moved and seconded. Comments? Or Mr. Snyder, I'm sorry. Well, we had an email from a person who asked that the comments that she made be incorporated in the minutes. Uh, I just want to note that uh, we did uh, have that letter, period. I think the, I think the official public hearing is next Tuesday. So, and I requested that those minutes or those responses, written responses, be included in the official record. Anybody else? All in favor of the motion say yes. 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 All opposed say no. No. One no. WM12 slash air dash six dash eighty five authorizing human resources to accept the proposal. Sure. Second. Move second. Questions? All in favor say yes. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. WM 12 dash or slash 6 dash 86. So moved. Moved and second. Or moved. Mm -hmm. I hear a second. Second. Moved and second. Questions? Mr. Jagger. I take it that all these are going to be there all the time. They're staying at the place. They're not taking these home or anything like that. Uh, Debbie Hennigan, Human Resources Director. No, what they're going to do, they're, they're part of what's called a computer on wheels. It's called COW, and all the computers go in it. And so as we do our Career Connect um, classes, they'll be taken out, and they'll use them at the desk, and then they'll go back in the computer cart when they're done. What's a what's projected lifetime when you... I mean, do they have that? It's just, it's just, every two years, we got to throw these away, or they protect longer than this? Oh, or? I can't answer that. Yeah, uh, Keith Kaplan, Finance Management Services Director. I mean, uh, again, the same thing with the other thing, client uh, modules. Yeah, these are anywhere between 10 and 15 years. But again, there's no moving parts on these at all. Um, 
again, to give you a good analogy, is it's a big flash drive that's in these things. Uh, so again, no moving parts equals less friction, equals greater the, the length of return on investment. Uh, we, from, again, the specifications, this isn't, because I, you know, not, just not from Heath Kaplan, for the specifications, it's a minimum of 10 years, but we're expecting between 10 and 15. You know, I, it, um, I guess he, I don't, I, he, he probably knows, the, the mobile charging carts are there, or? Are yeah, we have them already. There's two, there's two of them. We've okay. already purchased those. They are already. Anybody else? Negative. 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 Slash six dash eighty seven. Approve the summer tax collection bond. Second. Second. Questions. All in favor, say yes. 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 Carries WM 12 slash 6 dash 89 for human resources. So moved. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Questions, comments, Mr. Jagger. Uh, can we have a little view of what the study is going to entail? What the actuary will determine is the cost that the county needs to front for our retirees' medical insurance. It determines the liability that's out there, and then it tells the actuary will determine what our cost will be over the next two years that we have to fund the account for future retirees. Well, what I'm wondering is, why don't we go back a couple of years, and two years forward further, and see how much this thing is progressively getting worse, or if it's holding its own? Yes. Oh, we we did have we did do it. We had figures for last year and this year. This will be for the next year. By law, we're required to do this every couple of years. Well, when we get the study back, we'll show the prior years and the years coming into the future. If yeah, it's made. Yeah, I, we can compare the difference. And um, cheaper. Well, this shows the long-term feasibility of what we have to do to keep it maintained. If it's short or long, I mean, it, will the study have the feasibility of this thing? into the future Which what i'm saying is is, there, <laughs> is it short money or not short <laughs> he amplified some editors or source director um the answer to the question yes and no what an actuarial does is just gives you facts is okay given the current status of affairs and the liability that's currently at hand you need x to be able to fund it as debbie indicated what we do with it internally uh, between finance and uh, HR is we take that and we set the rate in the budget years for those two years to make sure we are funding that liability. So for example, uh, we started funding this back in the 0405 fiscal year and we've been progressing that each year. Each of those two years we are increasing our actual funded ratio. And so if our funded, this is the, here's your litmus test is if that funding ratio starts declining from a previous two-year study, you know that we're not making headway. If you see that we're increasing that ratio, which we have been each of these two years, that we've gotten the actuarial, but again, it's since the 0405, so those are relatively new, um, then we're in good shape. But that's your litmus test, is because right now, from our last actuary, we're like around 27 and point whatever percent funded. Let's say this newest one comes in and says we're 20. We're in trouble. I mean, we're, we're, we're assessing. Well, that's what I guess I'm, you know, to, I'd like to see this study more comprehensive, I guess, of where it right. did have into it, the it future does. I mean, this is into the back. Right, and it does give you a breakdown of everything by aging group and all that good stuff. It's very detailed. If you'd like a copy, we'd be happy to provide one. I would like a copy when you get it. It's a very, very neat study. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? All in favor of the motion say yes. 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 All opposed say no. Motion mm -hmm. yes. WM 12 slash 6 dash 90 for public works. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. <coughs> Questions, comments? Mm -hmm. Mr. Mm -hmm. Plummer? Uh, I 
preach this long that we need to look at all bids when they come in and uh, weigh them individually, not by just price, but by quality, uh, by how it affects the county, what the employers do. Um, and, and Mr. Velasco stated his case really well. Just to let you know, I won't have a hard time making my decision that I will go with the local contractor on this. Thank you. Mr. Stoney. You know, normally I've been a, a uh, strong, at least I consider myself a strong for uh, going with a little bitter. Um, in, in this particular case, I'm concerned about, first of all, Alaska is offering a 1.5% early discount, payment discount, which we get the price almost very, very close. That's number one. Number two, this generator hopefully won't break, but if it does, the generator is operating the new blade servers in the, in the uh, general services building. And I mean, if there's a problem, I really would rather have somebody like five blocks away than somebody in Charlotte, Michigan. So um, I'm going to break my long-standing tradition on this and vote for the uh, for Velasco on this one. Mr. Jager, I'd like to know where the other generator went and did we tell it or where did he go? Uh, John Warner, Public Works Department. Uh, the old generator is still there at the moment. Uh, we are going to keep it and use it around here. We were um, anticipating putting it possibly on the uh, facilities management building because their computer over there keeps all the heat um, HVAC systems running around the campus. Well, didn't we originally when we went out to do this decide that we were going to trade it off as there that got changed again? And that, that was one of the things that we looked at then when the bid went out that was taken off. <clears throat> Director. Um, the first thing I'd like to, to indicate um, is, um, is one, I, I appreciate John Warner's assistance in this project. Uh, you know, this, this project really started off, at least in my, in my uh, viewpoint, was a, a pretty small project. I was thinking, hey, we need a, you know, a generator to support our new uh, server room. And you know, if we would have proceeded under that notion, um, we would have been, I think, very short-sighted with our solution. So I want to first uh, acknowledge John uh, has been a uh, good partner and I, I've appreciated his assistance. I'm also um, Mr. Gustafson uh, from Hooker D. Young has been uh, very essential as well as to helping us in, in, in this process. So I want to extend my appreciation to him and to Velasco uh, Electric who was helping. This was all a team process putting together the specs for this thing. But in regards to the project itself is now that we've uh, put together our, our data center room, retooled it, and put everything in the central services building. We do not have a generator that can support that and other major uh, infrastructure pieces at the central services building. And so basically, it puts at risk that investment the county just made in the central services building. And so on top of that, um, which made this project really kind of evolve is not only did we have not enough po emergency power, we didn't have enough cooling capacity to cool down that room. Um, we now have a, uh, a sensor device in that room that anytime it gets above a third certain temperature threshold, I'll get notified, basically everyone gets notified, including Bonnie, I don't care if it's three in the morning, we get it on our phones and everything that lets you know it's too hot in that room and you're about ready to get a major failure if you don't get it cooled down. And the reason for that is we simply don't have, have enough cooling capacity in that room. And so this takes care of that issue, plus our emergency power issue, and plus gives us uh, the ability to power the building, those essential functions within the central service building that weren't originally considered. 
So, so if the generator system breaks down, that's a major disaster. We're in trouble. So a local vendor really would be a good thing on this project. You don't want much downtime on this because, if, for example, if that central services server goes down, half of your um, county will go down IT-wise, half of it. Plus, if I, you know, I, I'm not going to make a not yes to amend the motion, but um, if if the bid, I, I don't know how the building's going to go, but if Mr. Blasco, the Blasco company gets the uh, bid to uh, direct finance to make sure they get paid promptly so they get the whole discount. I don't know who, I guess you're That'd be me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and also, um, Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, if you'd like as well, we asked uh, Mr. Gustafson from Hooker Young to be here because he was our project lead that led this process for um, the county and for John and I. So if you'd like him to kind of go through that process to kind of show you that he did the reference checks and everything, uh, I defer to your judgment if you'd like to hear that information. Sure, why not? <coughs> Rob Gustafson, representation for Hooker de Young Design Firm for the project. Um, I guess I was asked by Heath um, after the bids came in to do a, a reference check on the lowest qualified bidder. Um, so I did contact Diversified Power. Fortunately, we played phone tag over the last week and I did speak with them 20 minutes before I came here to present my findings to you guys. Uh, the findings were that he was not the lowest qualified, he was missing the HVAC portion on the project. Um, he didn't have any of that in his bid. He did ask that I ask you guys. He wanted a couple hours to check the price so that he would uh, uh, honor his quote if he could. Um, so I didn't go any further into checking the uh, next lowest contractor, that being airport, um, mostly because um, off of what the requirements and the bid request for was the minimum company five-year experience and they did not have it as they stated in their bid where they just listed their personnel experience. So I didn't want to spend any more of my time getting into that. Um, I can speak to the process um, upon which this project developed. Uh, we were asked uh, by John at the time to uh, do a generator replacement for the county services building upon going in there, working with Heath, ISI, the IT services that provide for it, um, closely with Belasco who did a lot of the field investigation for us. Um, it kind of escalated more than the original expected uh, proposal that was listed before you guys earlier. Um, and then the project grew to what it is now and the importance of it. So, thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Wilkins? Yes, Mr. Chair. I supported the motion and, and in view of the discussion and my thinking, can I change my vote? At this point? Well, I think we'll. I, I think we're going to vote on this motion and keep it on the outcome of that. We'll have a, uh, certainly another suggestion. I think that's so all we have a motion to do that. Uh, yeah. Well, that motion hasn't been seconded, but the amendment, correct? Correct. <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, we have a couple different ways to do it. I don't know that anybody seconded the motion to amend, so if that was to occur, you would vote on that first. So that, that, dies so that dies for lack of a second. So you go back to the initial motion, and people vote how they want. Mm -hmm. And so by supporting the motion, it doesn't obligate you to vote for it. I guess that's how I would answer your question. You can't change your support now, but if you don't want to vote for it, just vote against yes, it. Okay, I got you. That makes sense. So what are we voting on? What are the two well, the 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 board 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 the airport life. That was airport the airport life. Mr. Yeah. Sire? Uh, I typically would be in a position where I would support uh, the competitive bid. I think it's important that we maintain the integrity of competitive bidding. Uh, if you don't do that, all of a sudden you wind up with no competitive bids. So I think it's very important. I also think it's very important that we have the integrity of the people who ultimately get the bid to make sure that it's operable. From what I've heard, I was prepared to vote in favor of the motion. From what I've heard here today, I cannot support the motion uh, simply because I don't see that there's that integrity on the part of whoever. It, I don't airport mean, lighting. Yeah, I left my computer on my desk at home. And airport lighting has substantially 
complied with the bid document. Uh, so with that, I propose to vote against this motion. Mr. Mullen, uh, my feelings are the same as with Mr. Snyder. I think there's some concerns being expressed here in terms of the reliability of this particular company in what they have done in the past and not having five years experience as a company, even though they have the same name, it's a different organization. And I can't support the motion. Mr. Engel, that's why I made the amendment, is because you actually only have one qualified bidder on this, and so we should follow our procedure, but obviously I can't support it either. Mr. Bonner? I just want to say that this is the way you go through a bid process to narrow it down to who's a qualified contractor. It doesn't always mean it's the cheapest contractor. And I think we've all answered that question. Well said. Mr. Baumeier? Thank <laughs> 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 you. got to turn it towards him. I don't want to so now, does this, does, does Lesko have to apply now to, I mean, does it, it doesn't automatically go to Lesko. If this gets turned down, someone will have to make a proposal to vote for something else. John? I'm just going to make uh, one other comment, uh, and, and that is that I presume that if we had made this, and if we were in dire circumstances, that a phone call from this office to Mr. Velasco would have resulted in that getting serviced. I've known John for, and his father for <laughs> umpteen billion years, and I know that it would have gotten the service no matter what. That's just in the nature of the work that they do. But that's not a concern. The, really is, the real concern is that there just there is not a qualified bid there other than, other than Velasco. <laughs> okay, everybody else? Anybody else? Everyone in this favor of this motion say yes. All opposed say no. 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 Motion's denied. I'd like to make a motion we accept Velasco's bid uh, contract. That's been moved and seconded to uh, work on Velasco Electric. Any questions or comments on that? Does that include the discount? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see none. All in favor of the motion say yes. 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 All the people say no. No. No, no. Hallelujah. Thank you. I think you made the right move. That motion carries. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. <coughs> old business. Any old business? Any new business? Any new business? See no new business, public comment on a new topic item. Anybody in the audience like to address the board today? See you then, I entertain a motion. So, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, closed session. Session. So moved to go to closed session. I've been moved to go to closed session to discuss negotiation connected to a collective bargaining agreement. Roll call, please. Commissioner Plummer? Yes. Commissioner Stolman? Yes. Commissioner Snyder? 